Any piece that uses a lot of counterpoint is going to challenge us as a pianist and as a musician. Because really, a piece that uses counterpoint is asking us to be several musicians at once. And that's going to be a challenge physically. It's also going to be a challenge mentally and musically. But when we master that, performing a piece that has a lot of counterpoint, being able to do several musical things simultaneously is going to be one of the most thrilling experiences I think you can have as a musician. So I hope that's something that you get at least a taste of as we go through number 22 and as we go through the last few pieces that we're going to look at in Microcosmos. So let's talk about exactly how we're going to approach this piece practically. And actually, before we do that, I want to point out that we have a new musical symbol in this piece, a musical symbol that we've not encountered before, and that is right here, this fancy-looking F that we have in the beginning. That F is a dynamic marking, and we're going to see dynamic marks in the, all of the pieces that we have coming up. A dynamic mark is basically a, a, a musical symbol that tells us how loud or how soft we're going to play. And this particular musical mark, the F, stands for, or is an abbreviation for, the Italian word forte. Forte is the Italian word that means strong. So this means play this with strength. And, and most often when we see an F, we usually interpret that to mean that this is going to be played on the louder side of things rather than the softer side of things. So make sure that you're playing this piece Forte, forte with strength. So let's talk about how we're actually going to approach this piece as a pianist. Well, the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to practice this piece hands alone, one hand at a time. And when I say we're going to practice this piece hands alone, I don't mean just that we're going to go to the piano and start practicing. We're going to practice all of our musical elements for each hand to get to know them thoroughly. So we're going to start with the right hand. We're going to perform the rhythm from beginning to end on ta. Then we're going to add in the solfege syllable. So we're going to perform the right hand on solfege syllables in rhythm. Sol, la, si, do, si, la, si, do, re. And after we feel comfortable with that, then we're going to go to the keyboard and play this melody. And then we're going to do the same thing with the left hand. We're going to go through and perform the rhythm on ta. We're going to learn the solfege syllables and perform the solfege in rhythm. And then we'll go to the piano and actually learn the musical lines. Now, what you're going to notice about this piece is that performing this piece hands alone, one, one musical line at a time, is actually not going to be that challenging for us. This is neither the, the left hand by itself nor the right hand by itself is going to introduce or is going to introduce any kind of new problem to us. This is all going to be very manageable. It's when we start putting them together that things are going to get difficult. But it's, but it's important as a baseline to really know musically what's going on and be secure musically what's going on with the right hand and the left hand, not just physically at the piano, but also uh, musically, with the solfege, with the rhythm. Because things are going to get exponentially more difficult when we try to put these two independent musical lines together. Another thing that I'm going to suggest is that you be very generous with your fingering. Now this happens to be a piece where we're not going to change our hand position from beginning to end in either hand. But having the fingering... In fact, I would suggest you go through and finger every single note in this piece. Having the fingering is going to help our brains when we start to put these two musical lines together. It's, it's going to be a really, really helpful tool to sort of get us going. And you can go through and do this on your own. You know, huge challenges here. This is just going to be one, two, three, four, three. Everything is where you expect it to be. 
and do the same thing with the left hand line as well. And just as a, as a reminder, left hand is in treble clef, so don't start thinking about this in bass clef. Thinking about this, think about this in treble clef. Go through right all the line, all the uh, fingerings. And that you can do, again, on your own, and th that should be no problem. But still, this is still going to be a challenging piece when we try to put everything together. So how are we going to do this? Well, there are a couple of things I'd like us to do. Number one, and we're going to do this with all the pieces that we encounter in, in, in book one of Microcosmos that have all this counterpoint. We're going to be doing the solfege of both lines to start out with. Um, this is going to be a way for us to process simultaneously what's going on in the treble clef and what's going on in the second treble clef or in the bass clef in the rest of the pieces. So what do I mean by that? Well, every beat, every measure has four beats. Every measure has two things happening on that beat. One thing that's happening in the left hand and one thing that's happening on the right hand. So what we're going to do is we're going to go through and figure out what is happening in the left hand, what is happening in the right hand in each single beat. And this is going to seem a little bit tedious at first, but this is a really important part of the process. So just, just bear with me for a moment. So on beat one, what are we doing in the left hand? Well, we're, we're, we're on the note C. Okay, what are we doing in the right hand? Well, we're not doing anything on beat one, are we? One, two, three, four. Here are my four beats. Okay, so if I'm doing this solfege on beat one, I'm going to start from the bottom and I'm going to work my way from the top. I'm going to say C, and then I'm not going to say anything on beat two. Okay, what am I doing? I'm sorry, on the, on the top part. Now, what am I doing on beat two? Well, in the left hand... I'm, I'm still holding that note C, so I'm going to say C again just to remind myself that I'm still holding that C on beat 2. And then what am I doing in the right hand beat 2? Nothing, so I'm not going to say anything. Beat 3, what am I doing? I've moved in my left hand to DO, so I'm going to say DO. And then what am I doing in my right hand? I'm not doing anything. I'm still resting, so I'm not going to say anything. Beat four, what am I doing? I've moved to a ray in my left hand, and what am I doing in my right hand? I'm not doing anything, so I'm not going to say anything. So if I were to put my metronome on and work through the solfege of both of these lines, what I'm going to do is I'm going to give each hand of each beat one click of my metronome. So on my first click, I'm going to say C, and on my second click, I'm going to say nothing. On my third click, which would represent the beginning of the second beat, I'm going to say C because I'm holding out the C, and then I'm going to say nothing. On my third beat, I'm going to go, for, which is going to be the 1, 2, 3, 4, 5th click of my metronome, I'm going to go from, I'm going to say Do, and then I'm going to say nothing. On my Seventh click, I'm going to say ray because I've moved up to a ray, and then in my eighth click, I'm going to say nothing. So just like this. C, C, Do, Ray. Okay, that's easy enough. But let's see where this wh what happens once we get into a measure where we have both hands. We're going to do the same thing. We're going to go bottom. Or left hand, right hand, left hand, right hand, left hand, right hand, left hand, right hand. So, my left hand on beat one is me. My right hand on beat one is soul. So what am I going to say? On the first click, me. On the second click, soul. On my second beat, I'm holding the me, so I'm going to say the me again, just to let me know that I'm holding that me. And then on the second beat, in my right hand, I'm holding that soul, so I'm going to say soul again. So, my first four clicks in the second measure are going to be 
Me, soul, me, soul. On beat three, I move from me down to re in the left hand. So I'm going to say re. And then I've moved up to la in the top staff. So I'm going to say re, la. And then on beat four, I'm going to move from, I'm still holding this re out, so I'm going to say re on beat four, and then I'm going to say C for my right hand. So, again, I'm, I'm going back and forth here. I'm going to sort of show you what the, the pattern is. Up, uh, left hand, right hand, left hand, right hand, left hand, right hand, left hand, right hand. So if I do that, measure two with my metronome, it's going to sound like this. Mi, sol, mi, sol, re, la, re, si. So notice we're going back and forth, back and forth on every beat. So let me do these first two measures in their entirety, just to give you a sense of what this is like. And I know this is a little bit tedious. I know this is a little bit tedious. But when you're working out counterpoint, both in your brain and at the piano, you have to start out being this precise and this, uh, this exact about it. So let's, let's hear what this would sound like with the metronome. Again, going from beat one of measure one to the end of measure two. C, C, Do, Re, Mi, Sol, Mi, Sol, Re, La, Re, C. And then I could go on from there. And let me do, let me just to show you what that would sound like. Let me do the next two measures and see if you can follow along. Do, 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 Re, C, Mi, C. Fa, la, fa, la, mi, si, mi, do. So that way we're going, we're, we're taking account for each beat. We're figuring out what is happening on each single beat. Once we're able to do that, then we're going to have mentally a really good picture of what this piece is all about. Then we can get to the keyboard. And when we start doing this, we're going to bring this metronome marking way, way down. In fact, the first time you go through, I would suggest, this is the way that I, I usually like to suggest working on a piece that has a lot of counterpoint. Make sure the first time, the first few times you go through it, you know exactly what's happening on the next beat. So if you want to be really, really corny about this, but but effective about it. Say out loud before every beat. Okay, beat one of measure one. My left hand is on B on my fifth finger. And my right hand is resting. Beat two of measure one. My left hand is holding the B on my fifth finger and my right hand is resting. Beat three now here's where we're going to have a change. So say it and then play it. Beat three. My left hand moves to a C on the fourth finger and my right hand is resting. Now that I've said it, I'm going to play it. On beat four, my left hand moves to D on the third finger and my right hand is resting. On beat one of measure two, my left hand moves to E on the second finger, and my right hand plays G on the first finger. I've set it, now I can play it. On beat two, my left hand holds the E, and my right hand holds the G. On beat three, my left hand moves down to the D on the third finger, and my right hand moves up to the A on the second finger. On beat four, my left hand holds the D on my third finger and my right hand moves up to the B on my third finger. Notice 
how glacially slowly I went through those first two measures. It took me like two minutes to get through those first two measures. But notice what I did. I very, very precisely laid out the groundwork for exactly what the choreography of my fingers was going to be. The first time you go through this piece, give yourself, give yourself time and space to do this. And you may want to do this in, in chunks. You may want to do this in four bar chunks and come back to it because it can be a little bit tedious, but laying that groundwork is the best thing that you can do for yourself. Go note by note, piece by piece, before you even before you even bring the metronome into it. Then, once you've done that a few times, then bring the metronome in at a really slow tempo. The first time you go through this, uh, 40 beats per minute is probably a, a realistic upper limit for where you want to be. This is challenging. This is challenging, and we have to be uh, very careful and very precise about the way that we practice this. But once you get it, there is no more thrilling feeling in the world than being able to play these two lines at the same time. Um, and believe it or not, you all have the, the capacity to get there if we're careful, if we go step by step. And this is something we're going to look at a lot in class. So bring your questions, um, bring your problems. We'll, we'll work on this, um, and good luck.